and uh, Theo Osinga. And so I want you guys to introduce yourselves, first of all. Um, and so Theo, since you've taken the screen, why don't we start with you? And so what attracted you to YRC growers and distributors and maybe what, what keeps you here? Thank you very much for the introduction, Rod. So what attracted me to YYC growers and distributors? The organizational structure, quite honestly. See, YYC growers and distributors employs a distributed organizational structure. This means that accountabilities are created by the people on the team and the people on the team manage their own responsibilities and sort of report to themselves. This creates a this creates a teal structure that is wholesome, encourages innovation and initiative taking. The second thing that attracted me to food is food. See, so YYC growers and distributors has a mission to revolutionize the food systems. And coming from a developing country, I have seen just how much food systems can impact the overall economy. Now, looking at what YYC Growers is doing to heal the land and heal the food system in Calgary, Alberta, I find this remarkable and it creates a template that can be replicated everywhere else in the world. So that's why I came to YYC Growers, to learn. Right on. <clears throat> well, and we have loved having you. Um, for those of you on the call, Theo really is our tech genius and uh, helps us to kind of create the platform that we that we uh, are using. <clears throat> Sorry, I keep getting a little distracted by letting people in. Um, and so Theo, or Louis, over to you. Um, who, let us know what attracted you to uh, YRC Growers and, and what keeps you here. Yeah, I mean, my, my origin story, again, thanks, thanks for the intro, Rod, and um, hi to everyone. My origin story with YRC Growers is actually as a customer. Uh, we my wife and I um, started getting the, the subscription boxes, I uh, can't even think when, but many, many years ago, um, and just loved the quality of the food and loved being able to actually have some transparency around uh, where our food came from um, and starting to actually get to know and engage with the farming community uh, around Calgary and in Alberta. Um, as a, you know, I, I came to Canada, um, I guess it's, to 12 years ago now um, but what didn't grow up here and didn't grow up in calgary so kind of trying to find that could could be a, uh, took some time to kind of get to know what was available in the food system or was just kind of victim of the the basic supermarket offerings which which uh i was a little under underwhelmed by to be perfectly honest and so just just for for everyone's benefit because we all are like oh is that UK is that Kiwi is that what what is what is the accent that we sort of hear? It's a mongrel dog. No. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Australia and then I lived in the UK and then I've been here as I said twelve years. So if I go to Australia, they say I sound like an American, and if I come here, they're like, uh, "Is that is that South African or Australian?" <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, and then there was just through a series of events, got more involved with. Um, Kind of Rod, Rod brought me in and started, um, you know, helping with the board a little bit on some ad advice ideas, and then an opportunity came in to to come in and kind of uh, run the warehouse. And um, eighteen months later, here I am uh, as lead link, trying to trying to really do some amazing things with this incredible organization. Awesome, so good. Now I know you've uh, got a few slides to to uh, present, but what is what is YRC Growers or who is YRC Growers? Yeah, this is, uh, I'd love to share my slide because I think this one, uh, I don't know what to do this. This one has a good visual. Um, so, who is YRC Growers? Well, I think YRC Growers is everyone on this call. Um, you know, the name YYC Growers and Distributors actually, uh, maybe even without really thinking too carefully about it, I think really clearly identifies the, the three main groups that that make up YYC Growers. You know, it, it is the people of Calgary. Everyone everyone is involved in the food system one way or another. Um, you know, we all eat meals three times a day and um, people who choose to be involved in this system um, has a lot of amazing, fantastic benefits. So yeah, the people of Calgary are the first really kind of foundational piece of YWC Growers. 
Um, obviously, we have the farmers, the growers themselves, um, people out there doing an incredible job of um, growing in the in the best way that they can, and really seeing some incredible environmental improvements based on the way they, they're growing food, um, and then providing this in, this bounty, frankly, <laughs> of, of amazing produce um, right within our local region, uh, and then the distributors, the, the staff. That's kind of our team, and that's been a a bit of a change in how YVC Growers has been run from, from prior years to now. We've really developed a staff team um, and, and focused very much on the distribution and, and connecting back with those people of YWC so that the growers can really focus on being the best farmers that they, they can. So yeah, that's that's how I see YWC Growers and Distributors. Right on. So a couple of things there. So Theo, you mentioned the the, the distributor part. Uh, what really attracted you is is this distributed way of of leading, and everybody's got their own kind of accountabilities and and responsibilities. Kind of like each person is their own CEO. I've heard Louis you use that as a mm -hmm. as a way to describe what we're doing. Um, and then you're so you're also saying that YRC Growers is not just our little business over here in Southeast Calgary. It's it's the entire city of Calgary. Is that what you're? That's that's what I'm saying, right? I'm going out and uh, <laughs> and saying that. I mean, let, I, let the record stand. Let the record stand. That I think that um, yeah, as I kind of said, everyone is part of the food system, and you have the choice to be to decide where in that food system you want to sit and where you want to um, direct your purchasing choices and and who you want to be involved in that process. And um, what I'm really proud about is giving Calgarians an option. Uh, and as a, as coming in from the customer side, as I said in the in the intro, I was thrilled to have that option to have a direct connection to farmers in a in a convenient and um, you you know ongoing way that didn't need me to go and seek that out and find it and forge that myself every week. So. Right. Yeah. I, and that's I mean even um, as one of the founding farmers of Wabers Growers, like before we actually set this up. I mean, that was something that I would do just on my own. Um, you're trying to find find those farmers that that uh, align with your values and and grow clean and and good food. And uh, yeah, I think YWC Growers makes that a much much easier thing to do. Um, and so, speaking of food, so YWC Growers is in the food world. Um, we talk food systems. Um, and why is it important to have a business like YYC Growers? Or maybe a different way to ask that question is what, what are some of the problems with the conventional uh, model? Yeah, well, I've got a, funny you should ask that, Rod. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a couple of stat, stats here just to, to throw out some issues. I mean, here we are in, in Calgary, 80% um, of our fresh food in Canada, not just in, in, in Calgary, but in Canada overall is imported. Um, Farmers, on average, the research we've, we've looked at, that for, for food eaten in the home, only 21% of the dollar spent goes back to the farm. Um, and there's incredible limitations on the transparency. Um, you know, food is put in the, in the supermarkets based entirely on, um, you know, visual appearance. It's really the only metric that if you walk into a conventional grocery store um, that you can, you can measure anything on. Occasionally, there is some, um, you know, country of origin labeling, but it might say from USA or Mexico or Canada, um, and that's about it. Um, and so I think that there, there are some fundamental problems with that. I mean, a lot of it has to do with the externalization of the environmental and social costs. Um, you know, the, the food is grown at a far away place with um, lower labor rates and potentially questionable environmental standards um, so that we can, uh, we can enjoy food at, a, at an unrealistically low price um, and the real beneficiaries of that system are the distributors and the retailers and the wholesalers in the, the many, many steps that connect you from that person that's on the land growing the food and, and having that in our supermarket year round here. And then from a, a health perspective or from a, a decision and empowerment of what you actually decide to fuel your, your body with, um, the level of transparency is, is not great. So it's hard to know how nutrient dense the food is, what growing practice was we used, um, what were the conditions for the farmer who actually grew that food. So um, I think I think for me it's it's really that separation. It's it's the same way that you know as a hunter I find it it hard to see a piece of meat in a styrofoam wrapper and just accept that as as meat, which is I think is kind of the way everyone sees it. Um, the same goes for our veggies, like just seeing a 
a bag of onions there that I have no idea where it came from or who grew them or how they grew them. Uh, and, and even knowing with some of this research that uh, the farmer probably got such a tiny percentage of, of what I'm paying for it, um, you know, I think there's got to be a better way. Yeah, nice. And uh, I might add, as the regenerative guy in the organization, just that, you know, Canada looks at the conventional system for 12% of its greenhouse gas emissions. If you look at the global numbers from the UN, they, they talk about 23 to 24%. Uh, is pointed at agriculture. And so we, we are very committed to, to kind of reversing that story um, by the way that we, we do our growing. Uh, and so, so what is it um, that we should be focusing on instead as, as, a, as an alternate option for people? Yeah, I mean, this is this is where I get excited and what keeps me around. And you know, back to your earlier question, like, why, why am I here? I think that we've got a real solution. Um, you know, we've recently clarified our purpose statement, which is really focused on connecting farmers with eaters, um, taking that nutrient dense food and, and getting it out to people in a system that's truly regenerative, not only to the environment and the land in which it was grown, but the community that it's going into and circulating that prosperity in the local economy. So, I mean, our system is, is incredibly transparent. Every, every item of food that you buy from us, um, you know, and we will tell you exactly who grew it, not just the name of the farm, but the name right. of the farmer. It has <laughs> a name and the farm has a, the farmer has a name. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and we invite you to know them. I mean, sessions like this being able to engage directly with, um, you know, farmers and people in the food system is an incredible uh, level of transparency. And that that's really exciting, um, you know, and on the environment, we're certainly incredibly supportive. Rod is passionate about his re regenerative agriculture um, and really supporting other farmers in, in getting better every year in what they're doing. And, and our network of farmers are all, um, you know, just so passionate and incredible in, in actually the way they're farming. Um, and, then, and then having this community um, connection, you know, actually having volunteers be involved in the food system, make, giving people opportunities to actually, in, um, you know, go into their local community and, and pick up each week um, I think there's a there's a real community that is built around that of of sharing that connection with our food, um, and then of course the impact on the local economy is just is is huge. We looked at our expenses and costs, and over ninety percent of every every dollar going out of YWC growers stayed in small businesses in the in the local system, so or individuals, you know, staff staff um, salaries, our farmer payments. Um, all of the vendors we work with, we always try and work with local. And really the only, the only money that left the system was kind of for um, technology fees. So it's, I think, quite, um, quite a beautiful system. And I think the, the impacts of that could be, could be so huge. So um, yeah, I, I, I think it's a, it's a great model if we can make it work. Yeah, it's fascinating. And, and I know we've heard some of those volunteers um, get excited about being part of what we're doing because because I think they see that you know a lot of a lot of times we talk sustainability and we talk um you know oh no what are we going to do for the the future for our our children and our grandchildren and uh I think one of the one of the big things that that we we can see so clearly with YWC growers is that is that it does create that circle economy it does put all that money back into the local economy and so I know through COVID um, cities and, and municipalities were, were very much trying to um, push the need to kind of support local and uh, and yeah I, I'm just daily overwhelmed and, and amazed at how, how well YWC Growers does that. Um, so maybe for, for kind of our, our, uh, our guests here today why don't you take a moment and just walk us through a week of YWC Growers like how does how does it all work? Uh, and then this is also, if you listen to Louis and if you got some questions, this is, we're going to lead right into a ask, ask us anything, ask me anything uh, session. And then we're going to move things over to Theo and, and uh, some crowdfunding. But why was he gross? How does it work? Um, I don't know if you could hear the beep, beep, beeping of our, of our <laughs> delivery truck um, backing up to the warehouse door. Um, but uh, yeah, Louis, explain it. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's a it's a complex system. It's actually one of been the biggest 
the biggest learnings, I think someone asked me that this week is what if, what was your biggest surprise or learning? And it's just how difficult it is to do this. Um, so yeah, let's start on a Friday at noon when you, all you fantastic people uh, have your cutoff, you've got your web store orders in, you've updated any changes to your subscriptions. So Friday at noon, we, we take all of our orders and we break them all down by farmers. We work out our, we take out the plan that we've already developed. Um, for, for next week's um, harvest boxes and we go out and we place those orders directly with all of our farmers so and so does that mean getting on the phone and, and calling or is it email how does that work yeah so we currently we email all the farmers uh, with with um, a specified order for the following week that'll include whatever we've fit into the uh, harvest box shares um, and then plus anything ever, anyone has ordered and things we've ordered also for for markets so those get emailed out and it's Friday afternoon is a big, big job to actually email out all of the orders for the coming week. Then the farmers get that. And then um, over the weekend and Monday, Monday, they can harvest and pack that produce. And on Tuesday, we receive everything at our warehouse. So Tuesday is a huge wave of product coming in, get to see all the new uh, things, what's, what's seasonal, what's fresh, what's coming in from the farms. We also, it's a great opportunity to actually talk to our farmers that's our kind of touch point each week is chat with what's going on on their farms what's coming up in the following weeks you know often they often we learn interesting things about the produce they've delivered or um and then and then tuesday we actually break everything apart uh and then re-sort it out so each each pickup location so there's i think there's six on wednesday so we break up and put aside pallets for Hillhurst and Crowfoot and Bonas, um, and you know, go through all of the the locations and then put the right number of each type of produce to fit for the harvest there, plus all of the uh, individual store items. So it's a huge kind of logistical task to to break it apart and rebuild it in a different way. Uh, and then uh, Wednesday the the truck goes out and we rebuild for Thursday. Thursday the truck goes out. We rebuild um, for Friday. Friday the truck goes out. Um, and I forgot to mention as well, on Wednesday, we also pack all of our home delivery orders in the warehouse, and then those go out Wednesday afternoon and Thursday morning. Uh, and then anyone who has a Saturday pickup, there's also those Saturday pickups. And then, um, so that's the, that's the cycle of food. And then stepping back to Thursday, we start calling the farmers and say, what's coming up this week? What's fresh on your farm? Uh, how much have you got available? And we start building a plan to fit that jigsaw puzzle together for those um, harvest box subscribers. So they get an amazing balanced box that is, um, you know, reflective of what's fresh right now. Um, but also, you know, not just all carrots or all zucchinis every week. So um, it's quite a jigsaw puzzle. And then it's a, it's a lot of interaction with a lot of different farmers. And, and then, so it continues week after week. Awesome. <clears throat> and then, I, I notice. Um, I mean, I'm not in in charge of all of the things that are going on at Wabasi Growers, but uh, I noticed that there was a. Is the harvest box right for you? And so, um, we're a little bit choosy. Like, not everybody kind of resonates with with what we're doing. And and maybe can you describe um, a customer? And Theo, if you want to jump into this too, in your in your newly minted marketing role. Um, what are the kind of customers that that really kind of connect with with who we are and what we're doing? Theo, why don't you go for it? You go, Theo. Okay, so the average YYC customer, YYC growers customer, someone who cares about the community. See, we're looking at people who are faced with two options: go through the normal retail supermarket route, or purchase food from a system that distributes wealth equitably to farmers. So we find that YYC growers customers are caring people. They care about the environment. They care about their health. They care about their families. They care about the farmers. They care about equality. So in my experience and a little bit of background, I'm originally from Ontario and I'm now preparing to move full-time into Calgary but I've been down to work and experience market, interacted with customers. Every single person who comes up to pick up a box or who comes up to speak to us is someone with a big heart. And that's the, that's the beauty of this model. Why I see growers and distributors is using food as a connector to create a community of people who care about what we're doing. 
So in summary, yeah, our customers are people with heart. I love that, Theo. And uh, you're, you're one of those people too. And, and it, I mean, it's been interesting as we do a lot of our planning and thinking, uh, we keep trying to, and, and really it was you kind of coming, viewing things from the outside that really said, you know, actually YWC Growers has got, it's got something. Um, and I think we just started calling it love. Um, connection also works. Uh, but yeah, like that, yeah, Louis, you, you mentioned that um, this, this connection to the, the, what, what's local and fresh um, really helps us build a, a deeper understanding of, or a deeper connection to the earth uh, from where we live. Um, so, you know, I, I saw a post, you know, the leaks are coming. Um, so Josh Mans has, has leaks. Um, and, uh, and we're very excited that, that it's time to kind of enjoy that local bounty. Um, but yeah, so anyone have any questions that they'd like to, uh, to kind of pose to Theo or Louis? We're gonna put them on the hot seat. And uh, <clears throat> one question I do have is, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, you know, you're kind of all over the place, YRC growers, um, and yet, I, as, as I understand it, food is, is got a very tight margin. And so how, how is it that you can, can step into all of these, these spaces when, when there's, there's such a tight margin in food? Or maybe, maybe describe the, the, the margins. Um, maybe, maybe I'll send it over to you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, th I think we are in a little bit of a, that's definitely one of our challenges. We, we're doing this incredibly meaningful work and um, we're, we're trying really hard to boost up our farmers and make them the, the you know, really not um, kind of pushed aside. And I think that's been a challenge with the conventional food system is that um, there's a lot of downward pressure on pricing for farmers and it's hard for them to actually uh, make a go of it. And that's actually, you know, Rod, you could talk to this, why why we see growers uh, came about in the first place is people trying to band together a fair market for their for their produce by kind of joining forces but we have to compete i mean everyone everyone has the a a finite budget that they can spend on food and and um you know we we certainly don't want to be outside of that and you know we found that we're we're in line with with um retail pricing so there's certainly that kind of limit but at the same time we're also trying to maximize what we can send back to the farmers and make it really a a noble and, and well-paid um, you know, livelihood for those farmers. So that puts us in a tight spot because as I mentioned, it's a, it's a very complex business and there's a lot of work to be, um, and it's, it's, everything is very tied to the line to make this work. Um, and I think, you know, as we grow and scale that, that can, that can, those can, that can be improved because, you know, with, with, with the economies of scale, we can do more per box than, uh, you know, per sale um, costs go down. And as, as the volume goes up, you know, our fixed costs get spread across a bigger base. So I think that's the real, the vision for me is if, if at a small scale, this model almost doesn't work. Um, and, you know, if we can get it to a, a bigger scale where we're reaching more people and where, you know, those impacts we talk about for the environment and the economy and the, the community can be, can be scaled up. It also makes the business model more viable uh, because we can, you know, we can spread those costs out a little more and not end up having to put any pressure on the, the farmer costs. So that's kind of the that's the spot we're in with the with the hope for the future. But um, you know, day to day, it's 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 a challenging place to be. Yeah, thanks for that, Louis. And and, and so Theo, I know you are behind uh, the crowdfunding, and so why why is this important right now? Uh, and, Let's go back to you. Thank you, Rod. Okay, so the main reason why we need to crowdfund today was um, was summarized by Louis that the need for scale. Now, as we are growing, we find that economic feasibility can only happen if we rapidly scale our operations. So then we can have a bigger impact over an environment by reaching new customers, by having adequate infrastructure to store produce, by having the right technology to make this more accessible to customers. At present, our main goal within the next month is to increase our customer base to 1,200 new Harvest Box subscribers. 
how much more impact could we have if we were at 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 people in urban Calgary all eating healthy? You know, all this revenue going back into farmers and now all these farmers employing good regenerative agricultural practices to heal the land. We're building more connections. We're building a community of conscientious eaters. We're helping farmers build wealth. We're revamping the local economy. So our crowdfunding at a glance might raise some questions. Okay, why is an agro cooperative crowdfunding? But the real reason here is we need the support of the public to scale because our business model only becomes feasible or sustainable really as we scale. And we can only scale if we improve our infrastructure, if we improve our technology, and if we reach more eaters and benefit more farmers. So this is where we stand now. Beautiful, thank you, Theo. And, and I think one of the things that, that I've seen from YWC Grows right from the beginning is just this deep, um, deep authenticity and integrity in kind of what we are trying to do. Uh, and, and I think because we have such a, such a large social good that we're trying to create in the world, um, we want to build soil. Uh, so a lot of our farmers are trying to increase the amount of soil that, that we have on, on the earth because the UN uh, back in 2017 told us we had 60 years of farming. Of course, that's a global, Canada's a little bit, we probably have 100. Um, but every kind of centimeter inch of soil that we build um, actually helps to draw down the carbon from the you know, from the atmosphere, and and so so that's a that's a that's a that's a common good like that's a that's a good for all of us that benefits the the entire world and and so I, I see that on this slide you guys put the the Emerald Awards and so it's been really uh, satisfying for us to have uh, been recognized by that environmental organization. Uh, 30 years of kind of celebrating people that are that are kind of doing work in the environmental sector. Um, and then the other social good that we're, we're talking about is, is that sense of community where, where we distribute the wealth, we distribute the benefit to as many people. And, and that's, a, that's a bit of a different spin on, on most businesses um, that, you know, see that kind of benefit going kind of to the top. And so, why don't you tell us a little bit more about uh, this crowdfunding campaign? I, I, I've been kind of searching the your web, the, the Instagram, and, and there's some pretty cool stuff that uh, you guys have got planned. So, so tell me more. Okay, thank you, Rod. And I'm just gonna share my screen now. Okay. So for all our um, customers and audience who are familiar with our Instagram. We started off by launching our Grow with YYC Growers crowdfunding campaign, where we had a very informational documentary video about the work we're doing, about the need to expand, about our impact in Calgary and with urban farmers. So I suggest anyone with Instagram, you just kindly go up there and have a look at that. Now, even better though, we do have different tiers for our crowdfunding campaign. So I'll jump over here to Chuffed, which is our campaign page. Here we have multiple tiers of people who contribute. The first tier is actually aimed at corporate, or corporate bodies and organizations that seek to help us, which is a system builder tier. The next one is the regenerator, where for a select number of customers, like 20 people, they can be invited to wine and dine with YYC growers and our farmers at a long table dinner. Now this is a dinner catered by four top catering organizations in Calgary and comes along with exclusive perks and access to farmers to really eat the best of the land, to, to speak to farmers, to learn what they do. We also have another tier, which is the harvester tier, where people who donate are able to go on intimate visits to the farms. So they'll be driven around farms, they will be fed at farms, they'll be dined and wined and learn more about what the farmers are doing and how they're improving our agricultural state. And the next tier we have is a planter tier, which is coming up most recently. So this is targeted at 24th September, where all people who donate to this tier will go along on an urban bike tour of Calgary farms. So they visit different farms, they stop at our affiliate network places, they come home with souvenirs like a t-shirt and collector stickers. And then we have the supporter tier, where everybody who donates to this tier comes home with a collector's item and is recognized. The real reason why we need to crowdfund this way and also exchange value and make 
our, our supporters feel valued is because even though we are an agricultural cooperative and not a typical charity, we are needing the public now to support our growth. And in exchange, we're giving these experiences to grant a bigger insight into what we do and also create better affinity for our team and community. Hopefully through your contribution, through your participation in any of these tiers, you get to know us better. You get to become an evangelist. You get to see firsthand just what your contribution is doing. And by so doing, support our growth. So I'll go back to our Instagram. Just in our Instagram, you can click on our link tree and that just takes you to our crowdfunding campaign. If you are on any of our mailing lists, if you are on Facebook, you can then find the link to the crowdfunding campaign on our main pages as well. Feel free to message any of the YYC Growers teams anywhere for further clarity or even a one-on-one -on -one conversation about just how much of an impact your contribution can make. We need you to help us scale now. Thank you. Awesome. I'm sold. Sign me up. Um, uh, yeah, Louis, I know you were largely behind that, that uh, long table dinner. Do you want to talk yeah. a bit more about that? Yeah, I'd love to jump in on some of those perks because I'm actually bubbling with excitement about that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've got uh, this dinner. We, we were just really excited about trying to get some people in and see like in our space, in the warehouse, next to this cooler that has been the major asset that we're that we're seeking to you know get some support on on funding for, and we've we've pulled in incredible support from some really top chefs. We've got um, Jamie Harling from uh, Dean House fame and Teatro. Um, we've got um, Javal uh, Schuster from Val Catering. We've got Adam Trochi, who's been a number of top restaurants around Calgary. We've got the Allium, super excited. Uh, Julie Van Rosendahl is, is interested to try and get involved as well. So we've got some really like well-known names from around Calgary. And our vision is to actually have a course each prepared by these different chefs uh, and maybe a cocktail from the Allium and using all of our local ingredients uh, in our space and everyone bring their own take to what, what uh, this local, local food um, you know, means to them how they view it what they can do with it and, and really bring that kind of fine dining experience in a pretty rustic but and hands-on down to earth kind of setting of our warehouse so i think it's going to be super fun um excited to get a couple of farmers in there um so yeah that that's one that i'm very excited about and the bike tour as well actually that's coming up only in a couple of weeks but i think that will just be amazing you know i was cycling around just for fun last weekend uh with my family and and we were just saying like isn't this won't this be cool when we actually go out and and cycle around our own city and see farms and talk to farmers right through spots you would probably ride past every day um and and see where your actual food is growing that's going in, into those harvest boxes and doing it on bike just i think you know gives you a, a, a lot more uh closer kind of connection and realize how close and accessible it is and just showing the versatility and the the uh, diversity of the food system that we're able to pull from yards in Calgary right into this, um, you know, larger scale um, food system. So I think that one would be really fun as well. So if if people are convinced um, to kind of join us on this journey to to kind of create help us create this alternative system, um, what exactly it does are the funds going to be? How are they going to be put to work? Yeah, why don't you? Should share I share your one? screen there, Louis? Sure, yeah. I think you've got a slide. Yeah, I got a, I saw, I got a slide here earlier. <laughs> Some visuals, I maybe jumped ahead. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, the key things, come on now. Oops. The, the really key things that we've, that we've actually had to invest in are um, hard infrastructure. So we had a, uh, a number of YWC growers put together a, a number of small coolers originally back in 2017, which was actually a huge step at that time. I mean, I mean looking back there was incredible excitement about having their own cooler um and you know that was great for the time being but that got uh in the last last year or two that was a real constraint on our operations you can see i put a picture in there from a, a tuesday afternoon in the old cooler where um everything was jammed in there trying to actually organize and um set out for pickup locations in that incredibly cramped space i think we could barely even um 
we could we could barely even move in there, let alone uh, actually organize anything. And it became a constraint. We were, we were losing produce. If if that one cooler there was any issue with the um, unit, which was was an older unit, um, you know, we were at risk risk of losing produce, and we did lose some produce um, in the prior years. Our truck as well was an was an old, I think it was 2004 unit, uh, which had a rusted out floor and was increasingly coming to the end of its life. So not very safe for our drivers out there on the road and, and not very reliable either. So um, those two pieces have been the, the big changes we've made. So we were able to get um, from a, we were able to repurpose a, a large, much larger, more than double the size cooler from a supermarket that was changing its model and reinstall it in our space. Uh, and we're able to get a more reliable uh, vehicle as well. So those two things have been um, incredibly important. They're gonna unlock our ability to scale a lot. We can, we can easily uh, double the volume that we're doing now with those, those new assets, um, but they're very expensive assets. So those, that was the biggest investment YWC Growers uh, has ever made. And we're now um, you know, fighting hard to, to keep the balance sheet in the black. So that's where, um, that's where we're at. And then Theo, I'd love you to talk about the other two piece, which pieces, which um, the money um, could also really support us with. And that's on the, the technology and actually reaching new people. Thank you very much, Louis. So with regards to technology and YYC Core started off by getting an off the shelf um, agro distribution solution. Now our operational model is extremely complex with a network of close to 20 pickup locations around the city with different cutoff times for operations and deliveries for the need to, to manage orders to ensure fresh produce comes in, we quickly realized the need to develop our own tech solution. Now, technology development isn't, isn't, isn't cheap. It comes in quite expensive. And for YYC growers, um, I've been working as a dedicated one person on this team trying to develop it some more. So there's a need now to pull in some development resources. And these do cost us because we're effectively an agricultural distribution company becoming a tech company. The next two years of YYC growth operations really looks like a software company's operations. Now we need to have these new systems in place to be able to reach more customers, to be able to service more customers because our estimated goals of 2,000 to 3,000 people weekly getting harvest boxes need complex and robust systems to manage these. We need to be able to integrate our marketing efficiently to ensure that you know what you're getting you have up-to-date information, you're able to vary what you're getting in your boxes, and everybody in and around Calgary has access to us via communication tools. So really our infrastructure expands beyond the physical infrastructure of a truck and a warehouse and warehouse tools to the digital space. In a rapidly evolving world, YYC Growers has to be ahead of the curve to make sure we can meet the demand of our lovely consumers and customers. So in a snapshot, this is what we need your contribution for, to build a system to reach everybody. Incredible, thank you, Theo. And uh, yeah, I, I, I love how, um, it, yeah, like there, there's, there's multiple things happening with YYC Growers. And, you know, with my hat, very, very concerned and keen to continue uh, educating and inspiring farmers to, to be taking on practices that that create the, the nutrient dense flavor filled food that we uh, that people are used to kind of eating from from YYC growers, uh, but it, but that also doesn't that doesn't solve the whole the the whole pro, the the whole kind of story. We also need kind of your expertise, Theo, in in kind of creating this this tech um, foundation. We do have a. A question there. Uh, what is the deadline to contribute to the crowdfunding? At present, we don't have a set deadline right now. It's a rolling thing. So we do have one tier which has the perks going out on twenty on the 24th September, which is a bike tour. But following the bike tour, you could still contribute to this tier and you just have another perk replacing it. So we're aiming to run this campaign right from now up to close to the end of the year, right before the Christmas holidays. So, yeah. Right on. Um, maybe a, a wrap up question from you, uh, Louis and you, Theo, is maybe what, even just in this micro moment, uh, what's getting you most excited about living your life? So what's really exciting is right after this call, I'm digging back into looking at some of our analytics. So Louis helped us set up a hot map 
so we can see all around Calgary and understand which kind of people live in which sections, what are they eating, how best can we reach them? So that's what's exciting me about my day, putting Calgary on a map. Right on. So and and trying to be of service, uh, the best way that we can be of service to people that that resonate with what we're trying to do. Awesome. Thanks, Theo. And Louis, what's exciting you in this micro moment? Oh, this micro moment. I mean, I'm just really excited. It's a bit of a shift from the panic of of doing the work and getting the boxes out the door and and meeting our day to day, uh, putting out fires, as I say. Uh, to really thinking about the future. And I think this is really, it's exciting to be able to talk about this and step back and say, look at the bigger picture of what we're really achieving and, and reignite in me that purpose for why we're doing this and the, the opportunities to really have an incredible impact. So um, yeah, that's what excites me is, is the potential for what this could become in, as, a, as a major part of a food system here and then hopefully one day in other places. Yeah, so what, we, what, we're, what you're hoping to dream up is, is something that we could share and so that we can have these social outcomes as part of the infrastructure for other locales. Uh, I know we've been on different fo phone calls with uh, people from, well, yes, on Wednesday night, people all over the world with um, uh, an organization called EAT. And uh, they were very excited about what we're trying to do. And, and so I think that there's a huge appetite for what we're doing. Um, it's a big vision, um, and we need lots of support to get that, get us there, help get us there. And so anything that you guys can do to, to join, uh, lots of you are our customers, which we deeply, deeply value. You saw how we view you as part of part of the part of the team. And so this is YYC Growers signing off for another week, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. <music>